Hello, welcome to another episode of Fight a Game Fridays. I do believe this is episode 9. I guess now would be a good time to start talking since the audio, for whatever reason, cut out while I was recording the intro. Now, it's not the uh, my recording equipment that's causing the sound to go off. It's the actual game itself because um, I'm lastly playing the Dreamcast version. And my Dreamcast, while it still works in pretty good condition, is a little bit picky about its discs. So, uh, if it's scratched enough, there are some problems. And the sound effects were still going, but this, the music just, just cut out completely. And there's another part... There's another part in this playthrough where, you know, the same thing happens. And I'll let you know when that happens. Anyway, here we are at Soul Calibur. So we're now taking on the Soul Calibur series, and I think that Soul Calibur... Um, I like to say it's one of my favorite fighting game series, with a few exceptions, 3 and 5. But, yeah, so... And I'm starting... I know Soul Blade is the technical, or Soul Edge, however you want to put it, is technically the first one in the series, but um, I don't have that yet. So I'm going ahead and starting with Soul Calibur, because it's... Even though it's a sequel, it still spurns its own series, has its own series. Because the rest of the games in the series were, in fact, um, Soul Calibur games. So it's not like it changed any time since then. Soul Edge, or Soul Blade, then went Soul Calibur 1, Soul Calibur 2, and so on. It would be cool if they made, like, Soul Edge or Soul Blade 2, but... Whatever, because in the first game, it's all about finding the Soul Edge, and they don't know... Nobody knows, well not a lot of people know, that there, there's actually also Soul Calibur, which is the polar opposite of Soul, of Soul Edge. And the, pa the character I picked, you see here is Taki, she is the ninja with the painted on costume. I fell out of the ring there like an idiot. But, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, look at that, get to, you get to show you again. Hey, look stupid, look what you did. So Soul Calibur is like a fi uh, weapons-based fighting game. Basically, you choose a character, you fight through eight stages, and you basically just, you know, fight whatever. It's a pretty decent game. Um, when I first got it, Dreamcast, my friend would be playing it for hours. Because, like I said, it was a pretty awesome, pretty awesome game. It was like the first... I don't want to say the first, but it was like, it made really good uh, innovations to the whole 3D fighting game. And on the Dreamcast... It was like the first one of the first games that came out on the Dreamcast, and the graphics were a huge improvement over the uh, over the arcade game. I remember playing an arcade game, and then well, everybody remember playing an arcade, game, and then came to Dreamcast, and everybody was like, "Holy shit!" And they saw like the power of the Dreamcast at the time. At the time, this was these graphics here were just amazing because you haven't really seen anything like this at all, and it was like one of the best looking fighting games. Probably it still is. The best looking fighting game on the Dreamcast. And I think it's, it's even to this day, the graphics still hold up. You know, a lot of games, the graphics kind of age and they look kind of. They don't age well, and you look back at them like, ah, the game's still good, but the graphics aren't what they. This game, I would say, kind of holds the whole standard for. Not standard, but it, it, it ages well. It still holds to this day, so. Um, Killick is like one of the three main character game. I went to. Choose a talk. I had a tough, tough time deciding which character I want to use for this game because I'm going with most of them. There are a few exceptions, but I just went with Taki because I like playing her. She's really easy to use for the playthrough, and uh, well, look at her. <laughs> I mean that 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 suit she has is so tight. It's just very detailed. I'm pretty sure I was throwing it for fan service. Now here is Valdo, leader of the Money Pit. He he um, is the servant of his master, which I think is actually dead. But somehow his master still tells him what to do. And I think the uh, his master telling him it might have something to do with Soul Edge because it tells him go look for Soul Edge. So it might be like Soul Edge or a piece of Soul Edge possessing his master and telling him what to what to do. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna listen to you and fight wearing belts. His main costume is pretty much belts. He is blind. He fights by sight and, I'm not sight, but it's blind. Sound and smell, and even though he's blind for some reason, has a belt over his eyes. Like I said, dude's got a thing with belts. And his costumes got increasingly ridiculous throughout the games. Um, one and two was alright, but three and on, it was just, what the hell? Weird fashion sense for a guy who can't see. 
And then I guess he can't see, so I guess he just, uh... <laughs> and it's The Rock. Okay, not The Rock, it's Rock. But anyway, <laughs> another character. Um, Rock, he is a Native American warrior, and he fights to find um, his, his friend or adopted son or actual son, I don't remember. Um, Babu, I think, or Baloo. I don't know, some weird ass name. It's not a B or something like that. And he's pretty much looking for him because he was like kidnapped by like the minions of, of uh, Nightmare. Nightmare being like the big bad of most of the game. He's the one with the Soul Edge. Um, he was possessed by. I mean, he possessed. What the hell's his name? Siegfried, who is like my favorite character in the whole series, by the way. Um, especially in, in part one. In part two, he wasn't really in it. He was just like a character skin for Nightmare, but if you wanted to pretend you were playing Siegfried, you can just, you know, pick Nightmare in his third alternate costume. Uh, this game had, like, a shitload of unlockables. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Like, there was, like, so much for you to do. It's too bad fighting games don't really do that these days. Now it's so, like, they'll put the stuff on the disc and it's like, oh, well, you can have the stuff, but you have to pay for it. Even, like, the modern Soul Cover games were doing that. Um, it was to a point where you could still unlock things. But for the most part, and now we have Edge Master, who is in his evil Edge Master form. Apparently, Edge Master has two versions: one where he's good, and he's like the white beard. And if he has the red beard, most of the costumes are just cosmetic. But for Edge Master, it's like it's kind of story. He becomes evil, he becomes possessed by evil, and he turns red, and he has football stitches on his forehead or his whole head. I don't know how that works, but <laughs> maybe somebody took out his brain and replaced it with an evil one. I don't know. So he's pretty much like the guy who changes weapons between rounds. Uh, you know, you'll be like slight loading time between rounds in here because he is, it's loading the next thing and he switches weapons, so. Uh, trait shared by both him and the final boss. Who like also changes different weapons throughout the, throughout the rounds. Except he always starts with the uh, Soul Edge. But yeah, as I was saying, like there's like there's like a quest mode, not like uh, some kind of type, some type of quest mode, travel mode. You like you, care, you pick a character, you travel the world, you unlock things, you unlock art, you unlock concepts, you unlock different weapons, you unlock art gallery, just a ton of shit that was just fun to get a hold of. And it's something you really don't see a lot in uh like I said, modern fighting games. Here's Astaroth wearing his leather mask for whatever reason. He was made by some guy who worships Ares, so. Ares is a kind of response. Ares, the God of War, is responsible for uh, the creation. Um, Soul Charge, as you can see, is something there. I tried to do it in a couple of matches, and I kept getting interrupted. I honestly don't know what Soul Charge does after all these years. I, I read about it, but I don't understand it. I mean, I do it, and nothing really changes at all. So I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something here. But yeah, Astaroth is considered a golem. Let's try not to pop it, but <laughs> is a golem, and there's like tons of them actually. It's not just one. I think there's like one main one, but there's basically like a fleet or an army of Astaroths just out there waiting to uh, do their master's bidding. So it's probably why like alternate costumes is not the same Astaroth, gonna be a different one depending on which costume they have. So it could be like another clone or copy of them. But yeah, you unlock endings, everything, man. And just hours and hours. I remember when I first got this game, I just for hours played it and unlocked all that shit. Part 2 is the same way, and I'll talk about Part 2 when I get to it. Which, if all goes well, will be next week. So here we go at Nightmare. He's like the ultimate evil. He has a soul edge. Um, Taki is ready to fight him and destroy soul edge. That's her goal. She's out to destroy soul edge. I think she has like a piece of it in her weapon, too. So It makes her... It makes her able to track down Soul Edge and, you know, destroy it and stuff like that, or so on, to understand. Um, it had voice acting, but it stuck with the original Japanese voice acting. They just put subtitles, which is a good thing. Because starting from Soul Calibur 2 on, the characters just talk too much. It's kind of cool at first, and it's like, oh, just shut up and fight. Which I think you can turn that off, I don't know. Um, so I had the subtitles on. If you really want the authentic arcade experience, don't turn on the subtitles. <laughs> Because in the arcade, they spoke Japanese, but they didn't... There was no subtitles, so like, you know what the hell they are saying. <laughs> Unless that's something you can turn on and off in the arcade switchboard. I don't know, I've never seen it. But Soul Calibur is kind of the reason why I didn't do so well when I went to college. <laughs> because I'd just be sitting there in the, in the student lounge playing Soul Calibur all fucking day. <laughs> and then I'd go home and play Soul Calibur on Dreamcast. So it really took up a lot of my life. 
at the time. So I was like, oh my god, Soul Calibur, I'm playing the Frowlers. And my friends would come over and play a Frowler. We just have a good time with this. Yeah, this is back before we had online. And, you know, we actually had to get together in a room and play a game and interact and have a party and eat pizza while we're playing or talk shit to each other in the same room. Really not something people do a lot of days, or maybe they do, I don't know. Since, you know, since then, me and my friends have gone on to, you know, get jobs and go to school and have lives, and now we really just don't have time to sit around and play video games all the time. So, or so I think, I don't know, I hardly ever hear from some of them anymore. <laughs> I have new friends now, I'm just saying. And here is the end boss, Inferno, who is a selectable character. After a certain amount of times, I, I unlocked him once, and I got a per he got a perfect on me, it's very embarrassing. I unlocked him once. I don't know how I did it. Because the problem with the Dreamcast is, and the little VMU thing, the memory card, there was, you had to do a certain way to turn off. You had to like go back to the original screen, because the data would always corrupt and be lost on the VMU. And, they used to, and I'd have to do everything over again. Unlock all the characters, get all the stuff. And at the time, it was kind of fun. Like, oh, boy, I get to do it again. But now it's like... I got time, because, you know, I had no money. I bought this game used. I bought it for, like, 15 bucks. And, you know, no job, no money, so this is pretty much all I had. And, oh, my God, seriously, she has, like, a good ass. And, you know, a little pervert me coming out right now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but, yeah, oh, and boot physics. Uh, it's when uh, boobs really start to be a big thing in 3D and whatever. And, oh, I knocked another one. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yes, two ways, well, three ways to win a match, either by timeout, if you have the time on, ring out, or knock him out. And there you go, and I defeat Inferno, who also has the same ability to uh, use different weapons. He always does Soul Edge first, but he'll eventually... Uh... And then you get a little ending, just all drawn out. Not bad, it was kind of fun to do this. Um, so anyway, yeah, the music, I love the music in this game, it was just, it was just fight music for the time period, especially in like, what, 15th, 16th century. Awesome music, especially in the intro, when you see that part where, uh, the, the, you see the beam of light go up and it just plays that intro, it's like, holy, it's like, damn, that's some good music right there. And I wish I would've played the whole thing, but the stupid thing, like, cut out, because, you know, Dreamcast does not, like, scratch disc. I almost didn't get this game to work. <laughs> it was, like, not reading it, I had to, like, open the open the drawer and like spin it around and then close it and hoping that it would pick it up. It worked. <laughs> you had to do that sometimes. Or you had to turn the Dreamcast upside down. Yeah. Like the PS1. Didn't work? Try to turn it upside down and hey, look at that. So yeah, that was Soul Calibur right there. A couple of other characters that really didn't make an appearance. Uh, Mitsurugi is a popular one. You saw some in the intro. Mitsurugi you saw Horong. He was one of my other, other favorite characters. Mitsurugi, I liked him too. Strangely enough, in the arcade version, there was a character called Arthur. It was pretty much the same. It was pretty much Mr. Rugu, only had blonde hair and an eye patch. There was some reason why they did that. I don't remember why. I think because, like, in certain versions, sam something about a samurai being illegal or, you know, bad luck. I don't know. I gotta look into it. But they had the character. Uh, it was pretty much Mr. Rugu just with an eye patch and blonde hair. So that's where I was confused. I bought. I was playing the arcade first. And when I bought. When I, when I bought um, Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast, I'm playing a game like, Mitsurugi, who the fuck? Who, where's Arthur? Because <laughs> I, I didn't get it. So Arthur was like some English guy who was a samurai or whatever. But not a samurai. It was some weird shit. And then he's a samurai in this one, so. Um, his main rival is... What's her name here? If you don't... I mean, yeah, if you play as uh, Mitsurugi, you run into her as your rival battle. Everybody has a rival battle at the end. And then you go on to the final boss. They did the same thing in part two. I think they do it in all the series, except for like maybe four and five. I don't know. Five sucked, by the way, so I probably won't be doing part five, but who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind just to show everybody how bad it is, because uh, part five was horrible. I'm sorry. And, you know, that really hurt me. I was a big Soul Cover fan. I heard part five. I was excited. I'm like, sweet, Soul Cover five, yay! And I bought it, and I played it, and I returned. I, I traded in. I'm like, fuck this game. So, yeah, that was Soul Cover Lace for the Sega Dreamcast. I don't know if they actually ever ported this to anything else, so... I don't know. 
If if I'm wrong about that, let me know. So yeah, I'm just not sure if it ever came out for anything else. Maybe it came out for Xbox Live or something. I don't know. So yeah, that's the end of that. That is Soul Calibur for you. Fun game. Hopefully next week I'll be doing Soul Calibur 2. And oh, a lot of fun with Soul Calibur 2. That was a pretty good game. So this has been another episode of Fighting Game Fridays. I'm out of video footage, so I should probably shut up now. And I will see you guys next time.